There is a folder in DaVinci Resolve. Beyond it is the promise of free presets. One feature of DaVinci Resolve you see advertised a fair amount, especially among new users, is the small collection of free title presets that appear in the effects browser. You might think this is the only place in DaVinci Resolve you've been provided with free resources, but no, there is another. There exists within DaVinci Resolve a treasure trove of templates that can help you begin to explore and master some of the most complicated but powerful tools that DaVinci Resolve has to offer. Let me tell you all about it. Let's go! So here we are inside DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. And here we have the standard effects library where we have those fusion titles that come pre-packaged inside DaVinci Resolve. These are pretty neat. But the thing you really need to remember about these presets is that all of them can be recreated from scratch in the Fusion page. These are just presets that have been added to save you time and to demonstrate the full power that DaVinci Resolve has. Now these titles are accessible in the edit page, but what I really wanna show you today is inside the Fusion page. We can navigate in our effects library to effects and drop the Fusion composition effect onto the timeline and then we can open the Fusion page. And the only thing you will see at first is the Media Out node. I have nodes. Whatever we do in the Fusion page, we need to connect to this node, and then that is what will show up on the edit page when we go back. Now, the Fusion page has its own effects library. And first you will see tools. These are all the possible nodes that you can add to build your node graph. I am a master builder. Beneath that, you have open effects, which you also have access to on the edit page. But under that, you have templates. Here you have several different categories of templates that come prepackaged inside DaVinci Resolve for free to give you a place to jump off when you're exploring the full feature set of Fusion. To use any of these templates, you simply click the name and it will add the required nodes into your node graph. Then you can connect the output from those nodes to your media out and you will start to see a preview in your viewer. Now this template in particular is grouped. Instead of the single node like your out, this node has several stacked on top of each other. And if you double click, it will expand those nodes so you see the entire node graph of what is going on to achieve the effect you're seeing in your viewer. And yes, this is very complicated, but it gives you a place to start. You'll see that pretty quick, you can start to break down what is actually happening. If I move to the first node in the chain, this background node, you'll see that the color control gives us that light blue. So if we shift the hue, the color of the entire effect changes. Poke around a bit more and you will see that all these different polygon nodes are actually corresponding to these individual lines of energy we see. But since those lines are changing over time, if we go into that node, into the inspector, and move from tools to modifiers, you'll see that line is shifting over time because of these perturb modifiers. You could easily spend hours tearing down almost any of these effects to learn how they work and to explore all the features in Fusion. How much you mess around and tweak these effects is totally up to you. If you want to minimize this node graph back to the grouped icon you saw earlier, you can right click and go to Collapse Group or Control E. If we navigate back to the edit page, you will have that effect in your edit page ready to go. Some other highlights from this background templates folder include this wild effect labeled Bullseye, this 3D box that includes a title, and this absolutely insane helix effect. I'd encourage you to look through all of these, mess around in their settings, see what you can change, see what you can understand, or just drop them as is into your videos if you like their style. Under backgrounds, we have generators. These include some simple things like this checkerboard pattern, these color bars, and this color wheel. There is also this 3D2 maker, but I could not get that to work. I tried it and I failed. Beneath the generators, we have how to. Now these are a little different. They are not meant to be quite as drag and drop. If you're wanting to accomplish one of the effects in the how to titles, then you can grab that template, drag it onto your node graph and start to dissect how they are accomplishing that effect. And that covers things like ambient occlusion, uh, displace in 2D and 3D, and things like a glow mask. Underneath how to, we have lens flares, and there are a lot of them. And these templates function a little differently. If you click on any of these and bring them into your node graph, 
and connect them to your output, they don't show up in your viewer like the other templates. And that is because all these lens flares are meant to work over actual video footage. So what you need to do is go back into your edit and bring in some footage. Then you can click that clip and open back up the Fusion page and you will see that video clip that you brought in. And then you can drag any of these lens flares right down into your node graph and you will see the node. Now these lens flares are accomplished by several different means. This specific lens flare is a single node. So if you click on that, you will have control over positioning. And in the inspector, you will have a number of custom parameters that you can change to affect the look of this lens flare. For example, let's jump down to lens flare 32. When I drop this into the node graph, this contains multiple different nodes. But if I connect my media in to the beginning of that chain and take the end of that chain to my media out, you will see that we have our lens flare on our footage. And as I've gone through all of these lens flares, the primary position controls are always on this last hotspot node. And there you can drag that node anywhere you want over your footage. This node is also where you would want to set any keyframes if you want motion. If I want this lens flare to slide down this right side of the screen, then I can move towards the beginning of my clip, keyframe this primary center position, scrub forward, and then if I slide that lens flare down this right side of the screen and go back, you will see that the lens flare moves over time. There are 40 different presets of lens flares for you to play with, so I encourage you to look through them all, put them all over footage, and see if there are any favorites that you want to use in upcoming projects. Underneath lens flares, we have looks, and there is only one template in this folder, Posturize. If we drag this template onto our node graph and connect it between our media in and our media out, we instantly by default have this weird watercolory something effect going on. But if we move over to the inspector and start playing with these controls, we can get some pretty interesting looks. If we crank this smoothness down, and the steps up, you get this really interesting, almost artistic or watercolor or painting effect over your footage. How to creatively implement this effect is up to you, but I think this could make for some pretty interesting thumbnail artwork. And under looks, we have motion graphics. Here you have five templates, circle values, crazy circle, radar, radar two, and scroll bar. Some of these look really great. This Radar 2 template, I could see tossing right into a relevant project. But of course, you also have the value of seeing how they made the effect and tearing it down. I don't think I ever would have guessed that all of these dots on the radar screen are actually being made by the particle emitter inside Resolve. But that brings us to our next batch of templates, Particles. This legitimately blows me away. I remember several years ago when I was in college, I paid hundreds of dollars for a set of plugins just to do particle effects, and that was with my student discount. It's wild that such a powerful particle system exists inside this free piece of software, and these templates show it off brilliantly. You have some fun things like this really wild blowing leaves scene, some more abstract particles, this underwater bubbles effect, some really nice, almost serene particle effects like these fireflies or this amazing snow effect, this teleporter effect, the matrix scroll spawning particles from custom text. And then you have this wild effect that looks like this jet engine, which is exploding. This effect is legitimately impressive and really starts to show you the power that is built into Fusion. Fusion is a serious piece of software that has been used on some pretty crazy projects. And I think it's great that these templates offer a jumping off point for exploring the powerful particle system that's built into Fusion. Underneath particles, you have shaders, and these templates work a little different. These are shaders for 3D materials. So to view them at all, you have to set up a simple 3D scene. You'll need to use some of these node controls on the right. I'm gonna use the shape 3D node, change that to sphere, and with that selected, I'm going to add a merge 3D node, add a bot light node, and then from that merge, you need to add a renderer 3D and then you can connect that to your output. And any of these shaders, you can drag into your node graph and connect to your 3D shape. 
and then you will see that texture applied to that 3D object. This one I dragged in was a rusty metal texture. They have lots of different textures. I think they are a little hit or miss, but if you're putting them on a smaller 3D object in a the scene, they could function really well. But one really cool shader I wanna highlight is this planet shader. If we delete this rusty metal, drag in planet and connect it to our 3D sphere, you will see that we have a planet with land masses and oceans and even clouds. And here in the inspector, if we have that selected, you will see custom controls. Things like the cloud density, the cloud seethe to shift the clouds around this planet, and even land drift to create new organic land masses on the surface. And back in the templates folder, underneath those shaders, we have styled text. Although some of these could function pretty well as drag and drop effects, like this War Games preset or this really cool odometer. The vast majority of these templates are meant to demonstrate functionality that you can observe, figure out how it works, and then use in your own projects. So in that regard, these function pretty similar to these how-to templates. If you want to know how to affect a sentence at the word level, then grab this word level transforms, connect it to your output, and then by navigating the inspector, you will see that the transform controls are set to words. So any rotation you add here in this transform controls will happen at the word level. And finally, under style text, we have tools, advanced camera shake, chromatic aberration, and edge control. Edge control is a really great tool for compositing, but it's harder to demonstrate. So we're going to look at camera shake and chromatic aberration. So I'm just going to add a text node, connect it to my media out, and then add chromatic aberration to that tree. If I create text and scale up, you will see just a little bit of chromatic aberration on the edge of that text. And you have custom controls, so you can crank that up for some really cool looks. And this also works over footage. So if we jump over to this footage clip we had and add chromatic aberration, you will see, especially if we zoom in on some of these finer details, if you crank that up, you'll get that really cool, almost faux 3D look, like old school 3D glasses. And with this footage, we can also check out this advanced camera shake. If you click to add it to the node tree, you will see a fair bit of shake going on. And then you also have custom controls for that camera shake over here in the inspector. So there you have it, the treasure trove of templates inside DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion page. Some of these effects look great and can be dropped right into projects you're working on. But as I said, the real value of a lot of these templates comes from opening them in the Fusion page, seeing how they work, tweaking with them, understanding their settings so that you can create your own amazing effects that can take your content to the next level. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please drop a like, leave a comment with any question you have about this video, these templates, the Fusion page, or editing and resolve in general. And if you want to be kept up to date with new videos, please subscribe. Thanks, I'll see you next time.